Morning guys and uh, welcome to our post US Open wine the bag. Um, obviously going to be discussing Kepka a little bit about the tournament. Um, you know, it was a, a pretty eventful tournament as it seems to always be. Shinnecock, you know, such an unbelievable venue. Probably for me, definitely in the top three courses I've ever played. Um, I just, I just don't like to see them push that golf course the way they do. Saturday was a little bonkers. Yeah, yeah. and and I think in, in retrospect. They, they controlled it well for three and a half days. Fair enough, yeah. And they lost it for half a day. Yes, they did. Right, and, and I think there was a little bit on Saturday where there was some, some reactions where people were kind of losing it, going, they've done it again, and mm. they've, you know, bastardized Shinnecock, a, you know, a gem of, of you know, the US sort of um, courses. But re the real reality is the wind switched on them and the course got a little bit, yeah, little I mean, bit dry. Yeah, I mean, there's factors beyond their control that they... Yeah. But yeah. when you look at the winning score, he had a putt to shoot even par. Absolutely. To me, I don't personally. Mm -hmm. I, I like to see the winning open or U.S. Open score no more than like yeah. one or two under at best. Historically, I think that's always a box ticked yeah. if the winner's right round about that even. I think par. so too. Yeah. Um, so, and it, it turned out a pretty exciting uh, Sunday, didn't it? I mean, it was wild. Yeah. DJ was 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 always in there, but not not playing. Sorry, playing well, but not putting, putting. well. He missed every putt. Every, I mean, <laughs> he, just, he, ne he never made one. I think he made one about 14, but you could even see him bringing his caddy in so often yeah. and that sort of thing. I mean, 49 putts for the first two rounds, 38 putts for his third round. Crazy. Quite amazing. So, yeah. uh, But Brooks Kepke had done it again, defended the title, first person since Curtis Strange to do so, which I thought was, was really, cool, um, yeah. really interesting. Somebody said to me about, what do you think for Kepka's chances at the US Open before the week started? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no chance. Yeah. Like, you don't repeat because no one does US it. Open, no one. Yep. But sure enough, he, you know, his game was his game was super solid all week. Mm -hmm. So um, let's kind of dive into his game, his, his bag a little bit sure. and, and look at what he's got. So. Really interesting, he was one of the guys that obviously uh, was affected by Nike going out of business. Yes. So full Nike staff player um, was, was the, the, you know, one of the poster boys for that. He's an athlete. I mean, that's, oh. that's you can tell that, you know, top to bottom, you know, he's in, still in his Nike gear. He's, he, yeah. you know, he's a, a strong looking boy, very athletic. That golf swing that just, it just has so much power to it, doesn't it? Hammers it hammers the ball. Yeah. It does. I mean, I saw... You know, multiple times on Sunday, hit, uh, hitting in second. Um, you know, DJ, he, he'd hit it past DJ multiple times yeah. uh, on that last round. So I think those two guys are, are just two of the most talented players. Oh, out there. for sure. Different builds, I guess, the yeah. two of them. Like DJ's a little more lean. For sure. And Brooks is probably a more rangy. Yeah, and Brooks has got a little heavier with his lifting, yeah. I guess, and he's yeah. a big, strong guy. But you saw him hack it out of the rough a few times. It must have benefited him. Holy. I mean, I think, again, going back, I think it was around 14. He had a lie that looked like, you know, you'd be struggling to get it out if you were just, you know, average Joe. Yeah. But he's kind of hacked this thing out enough from about 160 with a nine iron and it's went over the back of the well, green. that's the thing, I know. Uh, and he's, he's saved par. I mean, there was, there was a little spell there, uh, you know, from I think 10 onwards where he made, uh, no, sorry, 11 onwards the par three where he made some unbelievable saves. Yeah, the yeah the par three one was ridiculous. Ridiculous, bogey when he, from... When he hit it in the bunker, yeah. I thought, oh no, he's gonna make double. I'm texting the boys going, dub. Yeah, for sure, yeah. oh yeah, for sure. So um, so let's, let's dig into his bag. Mm. As we said, former Nike player, so he became a free agent which was, you know, gave him, you know, license to, to sort of go wherever he really wanted. Yep. And he hasn't signed a deal with any one uh, manufacturer, so he's playing multiple clubs from multiple manufacturers. Like, which is know, really cool. Which is neat, a bit like Patrick Reed in that sense, when we were talking That's about right. him. Yeah. So um, Kepka's playing a, a TaylorMade M3. Um, the 460, he's anyone's playing, curious. Yep, he's playing that, and he's got uh, Diamana um, D+. Plus. Which is kind of the yeah? What's that one? It's, it's the whiteboard model of, of the, okay. the the D, the plus range. So there was the D plus S plus. A lot of you guys may be familiar. That was the shaft that kind of came in the the tightest product. The stock. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of black with the white band. Yeah. Um. So he plays that in his driver seventy T. I think I noticed the weights were back in the Split in the back. I never never noticed I'm the weight through sure. the coverage. I was trying to, I was yeah. trying to make a note of it. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure he had them back here. Right. right. Which is. I mean, he hits, he hits that high fade. He's got plenty of ball speed and stuff. Yeah. He probably just wants to hit more fairways. For sure. Increased and we've seen how much difference that thing makes. I mean, it's 
big difference. Really interesting, um, in the last couple of weeks, you know, the, the big twist face debate has been going mm. on all season, how valid the technology is. And, you know, at the start, people were kind of discrediting TaylorMade for even just not be their technology, which I think is a, a non-story now. Right. Um, but looking at the the list of, of, you know, top players in the world rankings, I want to say I saw, I think, yes, it's like 10 of the top 15 in the world are using a TaylorMade driver right now with TwistFace. Which is crazy. Which is nuts. I mean, if you go down the line of, um, you know, DJ, Kepka, Rose, Ram, Rory. you know, Rory, yeah. you know, just go down that Tiger. list. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It's crazy. Exactly. So. I think the question people would always have is, like, I know that their contracts say you guys need to play mm -hmm. this driver. Yeah. Do you think there's an opportunity where, say, DJ went to them and said, listen, guys, I can't hit this driver. It's yeah. no good. Mm -hmm. I need to switch back to M1. Yeah. You think they would let him do it? No. So, that, so we have to factor that in. He yeah. has to play it. On, on what I would call the mm -hmm. round table players that, that are sitting around that table at the, at the product launch. Remember when they, yeah, they, got, they all got their box and they open it and they kind of looked at the twist face and um, the, the R&D guys were trying mm -hmm. to explain to them how the, the recessed toe and heel would, would perform. Those guys and sitting at that round table are, they are penciled in. in. Whatever we have will fit you to the best of our ability to those models. Yeah, but to be fair, they've all played so well. If the yeah. driver was an issue, I, know. I think it would have popped up by yeah. now. For sure, I mean, yeah. that, that's exactly it. And actually, I saw another, another stat recently of all of those round table guys, um, every one of them has increased their driving accuracy by up to five. I think, it's, I think 5% was about the average, somewhere more like 8%. Um, every one of them. That's, and is that like a fair way around almost? That's a, that's a lot. I mean, it's got to be, right? They've been, uh, most of the guys I saw were like 54% fair ways to 60. You know, 55 to 62. It's not nothing. You'd rather gain it than lose it. Of course. So uh, I think, you know, twist face is, is starting to prove itself to be uh, a valid technology for TaylorMade and, uh, and those players. Um, so um, into the three wood. Um, Kepka has, I think, older M one, M M2, M2 Tour, right? Yeah. M2 Tour. Um, so he has that with the same shaft. He does the Diamana uh, D Plus again, 80TX yep. uh, in that one. So just gotcha. keeps that continuity um, of, of the profiles of the shaft he mm. uses. Um, I don't see Kepka hitting too many three woods out there. He hit the driving iron, which we'll get to next. Yep. He hit the driving iron a ton. Right. And so did DJ. I don't remember DJ hitting any fairways either maybe one or two it? yeah it seemed like it was either kind of drive it or or kind of you know hit the the driving iron sort of out there but they were hitting um, the driving irons 290 down the hill a lot of the time so when the courses get running like that that's that's for sure that's yeah, when that's the driving iron to these guys is so powerful i mean we just done the video on it and i'm you know powder puff compared to those guys yeah. but you know it, the thing was still getting out there 260 when when yeah. you, you were chasing it uh, out there a little more so that they're really quick mm. uh, those those uh tail made driving irons but in Kepka's case, he uses a, a, actually the only Nike club he has left in the bag yeah. is his, uh, his Vapor Pro. Vapor Pro. And yeah. was that a driving iron or is it an iron from a set? It's, it was actually an iron from a set, but it was the way it was designed, it was designed purely with speed in mind. Okay. It was actually a, an iron that had very minimal offset. And, and you know, it was Rory had it in the bag. He oh, really? loved okay. it. Yeah, a bunch of the Nike guys hmm. uh, had it. It was called the Fly Pro, and it was kind of... Uh, very much a kind of hollow construction, really fast face. Even when you hit it, you could really hear that high pitched oh, yeah. uh, kind of noise that is very indicative of how thin the face is. Mm. So, um, you know, that was that was a weapon for him a, a bunch of times. One of the keys to his win, I would say. Yeah, Make that thing great. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, in that, he uses a Fujikura um, Pro 95X uh, okay. iron shaft in that one. Another so, guy going to graphite with a driving iron, mm -hmm, pretty yep. common. Most of them do. Yeah. You know, I think that's fair to say, whether it's kind of hazardous 105, whether it's, you know, 95 gram X, mm. most of them are going to Jordan Spieth with his uh, graphite design DI that yep. he plays in his TMB. Kind of um, surprised that he only plays the 95. I mean, he's got to be one of the too. strongest guys out there. Well, and we, when we talk about in, in our fits, when we're doing it, the, the role of weight and timing and, mm. you know, the, the kind of faster the swing, the more you need to feel where that club is, you know, throughout the swing. He loads it so oh, quick, too. He, he loads it so hard. Hmm. Um, I was actually surprised that that wasn't more like 105, 110 as well. That's what I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But even looking at his, his fairway would. You know, 80TX, I mean, you know, you look at a Gary Woodland, a Tony Finau, 
Those guys are up at 90 and 100 90. grams up yeah. there. They're similar speeds. I think so, yeah. Um, I would say Brooks is even loads it harder than those guys, he, too. He would, he would certainly load it. Uh, those two guys load it. I mean, Fee, true. Yeah. Finau's short and quick, too. Finau's low. And, and yeah. Woodland, I mean, I've seen firsthand how, how much uh, he, he loads yeah, it. True. So, um, so that's, that's the, the sort of top end of the bag. Bit of a story behind his irons. Um, I've heard did, a little bit. Of, of I didn't read it in detail, but there's mm -hmm. there's quite a buzz around these guys here. JPX yep. 900. It's a forged iron, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yep. yep. JPX uh, 900 uh, Tour. Tour. Sorry. JPX yep. 900 um, Tour. So the smallest of the JPX line. Um, and and the the really neat story behind it is when the guys at Mizuno were developing the JPX line to run in parallel to the MP line. Mm. Um, the JPX line, they they sort of had is a little bit more of a sporty line, uh, a speed orientated line. MP's classic, yes. you know, MP 29s, MP you know 33s. Always more of a blade style. Yep. The JPX has came out and it's kind of trying to inject the Mizuno kind of craftsmanship with mm. a little bit of technology. Okay. You know, if we look at um, that when the first time Mizuno came out with JPX 800. In 850, there was boron infused through that through that metal, so they could try and uh, increase the, the strength of it a little bit, right. and increase the rebound speed and, mm. and that type of thing. Um, so you know, 900 our JPX line is where they experiment a little bit more uh, with the with the materials. It looks more, well, it looks less traditional. Yeah. A little more sporty, doesn't it? Yeah. I does. mean, even to the point where it's got the kind of signature Mizuno colours, the blue and white, which is. You know, you're seeing their base baseball athletes and mm. stuff. Like, that's always been the signature colours of, of uh, Mizuno. Um, so when they came out with this line, they identified that as their, their kind of branding and, and their story. So they tried to go, well, who's, like, who are the players out there that would be the type of player that would really represent what we're trying to do with JPX? The two guys they outlined were uh, Ricky Fowler, mm. You're not getting Ricky Fowler out that Puma Cobra nope. deal. That's that's too tight. And the other guy they they had was uh, they had lined up was was uh, Kepka. Kepka, yeah. So they said obviously you know athletic, you know great ball striker, all that sort of stuff. But he just signed his Nike deal, so oh, they were okay. kind of a bit bummed that you know the, the the two poster guys that they wanted for it were unavailable. Right. Six months on, Nike are out of business. Kepka rolls into the Mizuno tour truck off his own back. Really? Asks to try this iron, gets a set built, falls in love with them. Mizuno, without having to induce that relationship themselves, get their man. That's wild. Which is, which is you know, for them was, was just like, you know, super, obviously, fortuitous that, that they were able to get exactly who they wanted. And uh, mm. he's, been, he's been, you know, every time he wins or, you know, back-to-back -back opens, all you see is just that picture of I that know. iron everywhere. I, I saw it on Instagram the other day. You know, you've got that, I mean, just the perfect little flat spot on the toe there, BK yeah, for we, a little stamping. Yeah, we have stamping. the picture up here. It's cool. Right, yeah. So, um, so that's an interesting story behind uh, Kepka's irons and, and kind of how these things go about. But, you know, when, when these guys become free agents, they play what they want. And he clearly had some... You know, whether it was nostalgic, whether he ever played maybe in college or something, he was a Mizuno player, he mm. always liked that shape. It's so classic. Well, for him to walk into the tour van himself and Request say, I, I'm interested in this, mm -hmm. he can go anywhere, it, yep. it's pretty cool. And we've gone only to the Irons, he's already played three different companies. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do another one in the wedges. That's right, that's exactly it. So he's got Vokies in the wedges. He's got Vokies, well, just as they touch on his Irons, he's got in his, uh, his oh, sorry, JPX, Shacks. yeah, he's got his, his X100s. X100s. So played still by so many guys. Again, no X, X7 version. though, you're kind of surprised no, not to I see mean, that? No, I mean, it just, it's, it really surprises me. Mm. I'm not sure if there's something about the guys just get the feel for X1 and just are Leave happy it with it. Yeah. But, you know, when we see our, really strong guys in here. I mean, I can tell you to a man, they all love X7. Interesting. The amount of guys, none of them really tell us uh, it feels overly stiff. It just, everyone goes, it just feels stable. It flies super straight. Um, That's you the know, one. And, and you found that when... Uh, yeah, know, I liked them as well, you, for sure. You really did. Um, so yeah, back to Kepka's wedges. He's, he's from his days at, as a titleist guy. Mm. He's obviously struck up a relationship with Volke and Aaron right. Dill and, and those guys. So still plays as 52, 56, 60. In the um, new models, SM7? Yeah, he does. Yep, yep, yep exactly. So, um, you know, 
again, just fallen on X 100s through the Same through the thing. wedges. So he doesn't well. go softer, which is interesting. No, nah, I mean he's probably just one of those guys. Just he's on the upper end of the guys with speed. So right. you you know the guys who would go softer would be maybe like a uh, like a Poulter type of guy or mm. somebody who's who's quick when he wants it, but you know also likes the feel and touch of it. Gotcha. Um, so tons of good wedge shots he hit. Like tons of good wedge shots. Yeah. Just around the greens, yeah. like nice little yeah. touch shots. So those obviously work for him pretty yeah. well. Winning combo, isn't it? When you hit it as good as he does with the long stuff and you've got you've got that touch around the greens that he showed, which really saved saved his round yes. uh, in the in the kind of start of the back nine where he could have been hemorrhaging shots. Yes. Uh, he was he was saving pars uh, mm. left and right, which was I mean you have to do that if you're gonna win a major. Yeah, those two par saves out, Tommy Fleetwood wins yeah. by a shot. Pretty much, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we were talking about that just before we went on, weren't we? About yeah. how much we would have kind of thought that that was a round befitting of, of winning the, winning the major. I honestly thought he would be in a playoff because mm -hmm. I thought Brooks was playing well, but I figured he's going to mm -hmm. make a bogey yeah. or two. Yeah. And when he when he drained that, uh, hit it over the back, and then on the bunker on the par three and made the putt, I, I thought, know. okay, well maybe he's <laughs> maybe yeah. he's going to stick uh, stick around yeah. level par. It was great. And I think it was such a contrast in that last round, segueing on to Brooks's putter, the Scotty mm. Cameron he uses. Uh, he uses a prototype version called, uh, so it's a new port, but it's called the T10. Okay. Uh, just a prototype uh, version um, that, that Scotty made for him. But right. the contrast in his confidence with the putter in that last round mm. versus DJ was, was one guy who was second guessing nothing. Yes. I mean, Brooks was just, just saw his lines, obviously could feel it, had the speed, and was, was just putting great and DJ who second guessed everything every putt. the caddy was in every every putt he was looking at it from every angle his speed was off I mean DJ should have shot he should have finished the tournament one under mm -hmm. and one by two shots yeah because he missed at least four or five putts that right. he should have made all day yeah but yeah I know you got to putt well the one he was open it is what it is I think that's it you know yeah. when the greens are are as sloping fast as is mm -hmm. what they are you know putting is, is always going to be the key component I don't think they set up the fairways too narrow uh, I don't as, think so as US Opens go. No. The rough was obviously very penal, but DJ drove it well enough and, yes. and hit his irons you know, well enough uh, that he should have probably saw that tournament home. But I agree. the putter just went stone cold in the weekend. It's funny, hopefully he figures it. I mean, if he figures it out by, how do you figure for him at the British Open? Is he? Good, yeah, I, think so? okay. yeah. I, just, I just think you know, there, there isn't a there isn't a bad major for someone like DJ. No, you're right. He's, he's just he's got too much horsepower. He's got too much game. And Chambers Bay, where he almost won, mm -hmm. you, kind of a linksy sort of yeah. British Open. I mm -hmm. know they're not exactly the same as a British yeah. Open kind of course, but... But they're getting that way. I, there was multiple times at Shinnecock. I, I, I honestly thought to myself, I could be watching yeah, a, a, a British Open right now. And it's cool because now they're going the other direction. Mm -hmm. They're going Pebble. Yeah. Um, I know Tory's coming up. I know Wingfoot. I'm looking forward to Wingfoot. I think that's 2020. Mm -hmm. Right. Those are more your traditional tree line <clears throat> golf courses. I think the, it's nice they've mixed it up a bit. Yeah, though. exactly. The Oakmonts of the world. I mean, that, like Oakmont and that's a, you know those types of courses to me are just yeah. like you know congressional. That's that's what I think of a, a it's US, US Open, Open golf like, course. Yeah. Yeah. N narrow tree line, thick green, rough. You know, fast yeah. greens. Yeah. Exactly. I agree with you for sure. Exactly. So um, yeah, uh, Pro V One X golf ball to finish. Um, so still, still tried and tested by by the best players. I mean, we've talked a lot about golf balls in the last couple of weeks. We have. We've done our own testing, and there's Morning. other golf balls that are as good. But yep. Pro V1 is, is is still the still the gold standard. And again, it doesn't, doesn't no matter. contract. He could have played mm -hmm. TP5, and he could have played whatever else. But yep. interesting. To the, see. I mean, they still win the ball count by how much every week? It's a ton. I mean, it's, it's a landslide most yep. weeks. Uh, yep. You know that they still have the most balls and, and play and. I kind of look at Pro V1 now a bit like, you know, X100 shafts. It's yeah, just, that's true. It's just, just what you're used to, you know, yep. unless something's, you know, functionally wrong with it yeah, don't. to the point where it doesn't perform in the wind, it doesn't give you the nice balance throughout the bag of flying well off the driver and good off the wedges, um, then, then the people wouldn't use it. I mean, I think the tailor made guys are obviously, again, they're on contract to play that ball. Sure. I think they've proven it's a very good ball. Yeah. But I don't know if they've proven that, given mm -hmm. the option, they wouldn't go back and yep. play a Titleist ball. And, uh, to be fair, I would also say um, that I would imagine Titleist pay a significant amount of money for that ball count. Really? 100%. Yeah, and and you know someone from Titleist is watching this and, and you know wants to wants to you know uh, kind of correct me on that. I'll, sure, I'll take yeah. it. But uh, I would say that Titleist whole company 
is dependent on the value, brand value of that golf ball. And I've heard that from other sources in the industry as well. Yeah. The ball is everything. It's everything to yeah. them. They just, they, you know, they are, they're just everywhere because of the ball. Mm. I mean, yeah, you, you would fear for them. You know, they make, they make good clubs and I'm excited to see what TS2 and TS3 are, are, are like. You know, there was a lot of adoption from the tour players last week into that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Justin Thomas, Jimmy Walker, obviously playing it and a few other guys, but so it's a golf ball company. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to take a couple quick questions? I'd love to, yeah. Let's, Guys, uh, if you have let's, any let's quick questions it. before we sign off, we are a little tight for time this morning, but uh, if we can get a couple in, we're more than happy to uh, chat about it. Uh, Paul was just asking about the new tireless driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's just... How long uh, do you think you'd get them in the shop? Just so September. People September. Uh, they're, they're talking about September okay. before we can, we can get our hands on We'll try on. to be one of the first to test it. That's mm -hmm. going to be tough. Canada is like, people don't understand. Canada's last in terms of new equipment stuff. We always get it last. It's always last. UK is, is and the US are always mm -hmm. first. So Yeah, I think to be honest, you know, because of the, the, the strength of the channel now and, and, you know, what's going on and how yeah, much true. support we've got, I think we may be able to, to kind of be a resource for these guys to I do some so. early testing and, and that type of thing. Um, so we'll that would see. be great. Yeah. Um, the new Titleist AVX ball is on our list mm -hmm. to test. Yeah, I actually played with someone on uh, what day was it? Just a few days ago. Was mm -hmm. using it. He thought it was great. Yeah. He's playing the yellow one actually. Oh really? But he found it seemed to be quite long and nice in the wind. Yeah. Um, Definitely a lower it, spinning ball. Uh, I think it'll be good for a lot of people. Personally, sure. I just wish they had made it a little cheaper because right. it's so close to Pro V1 in price. I mean, right. I get it, there's lots of technology. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's not cheap to manufacture, but from you know a customer standpoint, mm -hmm. Pro V1s are the top end price. Mm -hmm. And when, you kinda, when you're sneaking that close to it, I wonder if they kind of yeah. muddy the waters in terms of making that decision. Yeah, I, you know, I, Five that's bucks right. apart or something like that, right? I know, I know. Yeah, no, the, the AVX have definitely a lot of our customers who have actually, we, we don't have it in the shop. We had a few at one point in, uh, that were dropped in by customers, but some customers now bring their own uh, golf ball with them. So yeah. when they're doing their, their testing, they're, they're actually doing sort of testing with their own ball, which makes sense. It does, yeah. Uh, makes, it makes a ton of sense. I mean, we, we use a premium ball in here anyway, but um, good idea to, to get a do it with whatever ball you love. Agreed. This is a good one. Um, wedge is over 60 degrees. How often do you fit someone for like a 64? Not often? No. DJ, more, more, DJ was using yeah, a 64. Yeah, he was using a 64. I mean, he played a shot on... I want to say it was like number, it was like eight or nine or somewhere. Like he played a, um, he played a shot into, I think maybe in one of the par threes, he came short right and rolled back down and he played the most gorgeous little 40 yard uh, yeah. pitch shot that just had so much spin on it. And they were talking about his, his new high toe wedge. Yep. Um, we actually have them in the, the store now. I, I think that's a phenomenal wedge, that high toe wedge. It's really, really, really nice. And, and I think the, the, the design of it and the shape of it and stuff, the 60 degree is deserving of being a completely separate design from mm. 1556 or 1555, Agreed. whatever you do it. It's a but different club. The versatility required to mm. hit it from all lies and open it and you know, even the way the leading edge is, is curved so that when you open the blade, the face is always pointing at the target. You talked about that. Yes. Well, we talked about it in a video, I think. Right, so like if you take that leading edge golf club um, right and, and kind of open it, yeah, you know, you and, and play it open there, that, that face then points to the right. But if, if you have a, a sort of rounded leading edge, you can still get the, the, the you know, face at the target. I want to reference the video that we went through this on, but I'm totally blanking. I think it was a Y in the bag for someone. Right, okay. Oh, uh, Justin Rose, maybe? I, I remember we talked about it in like the PA. I put up, I put like up nice PM photos of it or something. But anyway, you guys can yeah. see the pictures online, but that, that rounded leading edge is quite unique. And they only make it 58 and up. That's right. Yeah. And his uh, DJ's was 64, 64. Wasn't it? Okay, let's take one more mm -hmm. quick one. Um, <laughs> was that? I saw a little Phil question here. Oh, I think he was talking about the ball. Um, oh, okay. Phil didn't like playing the Truvis ball. Yeah, the Truvis, is that the one with the... Uh, yeah, I think it's like Tervis or uh, Tervis, I think it's... The, I'm saying it wrong, yeah, probably. No, uh, yeah, Truvis. Um, oh, we thought the ball looked bigger. That's the one with like the soccer... Yeah. The, it's a soccer ball. Or, or Buddy Crossfield. Sorry, field. a football. Ball. Correct. <laughs> and the, you know, while the World Cup's got on, we yeah. better call it the right name. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> Still Canadian over here. Um, you know what? Let's wrap it up because we got to film another video, okay. which will be coming out on Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll probably be back. What, what tournament's on this weekend? Um, 
Travelers Championship. Right. I think Jordan's playing, defending okay. champ. You'll probably see maybe Monday or Tuesday of the week after for another video. But yeah, yeah. we'll have a nice video coming out Thursday. Yep. We won't, uh, won't spoil the topic, but okay. you'll see us Leave Thursday. Leave it as a top secret. Thursday morning, you guys will see us again. Good. And thanks for tuning in. This was great. Yeah, definitely. I always think, you know, post major uh, wine oh, yeah. the bags are very important to us. And we might kind of fleet uh, in and out of wine the bag over the next We're going to, yeah. We will we'll see us every week, but we're going to try to pick and choose the ones that I think, yeah. I, I guess the ones that people will care about the for most. Sure. Where um, there's a little backstory and stuff like Kepka and his irons and that type of his thing. His bag was really cool. Yeah. yeah. One of the better bags. Yeah. Not that to say that, you know, DJ's bag isn't boring, mm -hmm. but it's 14 tailor made clubs. Right. Brooks right. has got five, yeah. four or five different companies. And a guy and, who hates to change his driver shaft. Yeah, and like all that interesting stuff, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I think DJ is one of the easiest guys that, that on the tailor made staff um, to work with. I mean, he's, mm. although this year, what I was saying that, he started with M4 and then to M3 and he's back to M4. Right. Maybe he's, but I mean, it doesn't matter. He's How long of a story is that he's hammering every drive anyway right so, so good awesome so good okay. okay guys thanks so much uh, for watching um really appreciate you know we saw a ton of uh, questions coming That's in great. Here. apologies we, we didn't get to, to all of them but um, post them in the comments when the video comes up and we will definitely get to them exactly okay Excellent. i just see a little scotland for the world cup there oh if only if, if only, only. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years ago my heart still breaks that we can't make a world cup oh boy. guys thanks so much uh, for watching